Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, and Governor of the African Development Bank, who is represented today by Hajia Aisha Omar, the Director of International Economic Relations. You're welcome. Dr. Mohamed Mahmoud Abubakar, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Otumba Ni Adebayo, Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. You're welcome, sir. The Honorable Minister of State for the RCT, Mrs. Ramatu Tijani Aliu. Looks, looks like she'll be here shortly. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayade, represented by the Special Advisor to the Governor on International Cooperation and Investment, SAPZ. I believe he's in the room. You're very welcome. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Ekiti State, Mr. Biodun Oyebanji, welcome and congratulations on your recent taking up of office. His Excellency, the Executive Deputy Governor of Imo State, Professor Placid Njoku. His Excellency, the Executive Deputy Governor of Oyo State, Chief Adebayo Lawal. You're welcome, sir. His Excellency, the Executive Deputy Governor of Kwara State, Mr. Kayade Alabi. And His Excellency, the Executive Deputy Governor of Kano State, Mr. Nasiru Gawuna. Well, to all the members of partner organizations, SAPZ members, planning committee, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media present, a big welcome to what to my mind and to the mind of many of us is one of the most pivotal and strategic initiatives ever in the history of this country. I believe so, I don't know if you agree with me, but that's just my unbiased opinion. Welcome once again, at this point it gives me great pleasure to invite to the podium the deputy, the, the DG of the Nigeria Country Office of the African Development Bank, Mr. Lamin Barrow to provide welcome remarks. Good morning, everyone. The Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Dr. Muhammad Mahmoud Abubakar, Your Excellencies, Federal Ministers of uh, Trade and Industry and Investment, Representative of the Minister of Finance, Your Excellencies, Governors and uh, Deputy Governors here present, Honorable Minister of State, State Minister for the Federal Capital Territory, the President of Islamic Development Bank and Vice President of IFAD, Katrin, distinguished guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the three partner institutions, uh, the African Development Bank Group, and Islamic Development Bank Group and the International Fund for Agricultural Development. I am delighted to welcome you to day two of the high-level launch of the Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zones, better known as the SAPZ program. We are especially delighted to welcome in our midst the governors and deputy governors 
And in this regard, the newly minted governor of Ekiti State, His Excellency Yodun Oye Banji. You're welcome, Governor. Ladies and gentlemen, the Strategic Partners and Investors Forum is designed to provide a platform for interactive exchange for you as the representatives of the key stakeholder groups involved in the development and delivery of the SAPZ program. And in particular, this refers to the concerned federal and state federal ministries and state governments, strategic partners, investors, and other private sector actors. And we hope that this forum will enable in-depth discussion on the implementation modalities for delivery of the SAPZs in Nigeria. At the high-level launch event presided over by His Excellency the President Muhammad Buhari, ably represented by His Excellency the Vice President Professor Yemi Oshinbajo, yesterday, we saw the strong commitment and ownership of the federal government to the SAPZ program and initiative, which is recognized as a game changer that can drive inclusive growth and sustainable development of Nigeria, and also as a vehicle for industrialization and job creation. As you are aware, the Nigeria SAPZ program is the largest among the SAPZs being rolled out currently in 18 African countries, both in terms of size and scope. Phase one will be implemented in seven states, namely Cross River, Imo, Kaduna, Kano, Kwara, Ogun, and Oyo, and, and the Federal Capital Territory. And phase two, for phase two and subsequent phases, we have already received expressions of interest from 19 additional states. Among the key in infrastructure to be, to be developed under phase one include eight agro-industrial processing hubs, 15 agricultural transformation centers, 2,300 hectares of irrigated lands and access roads, in addition to the supply of certified agricultural inputs and provision of extension services, training and skills development activities for farmers and small and medium scale enterprises involved in the SAPZs. Equally important, the program will support policy and institutional development for the SAPZ program. As we all know, the private sector has a crucial role to play in the delivery of the SAPZs. And we are pleased that several private sector firms, both domestic and foreign, have expressed keen interest to locate in these zones. The implementation of the SAPZs through a public-private public partnership framework is anchored on a clear division of labor amongst the actors. The public sector is expected to not only provide the enabling environment for investment, but also undertake crucial investments to rehabilitate or construct basic infrastructure services, to aggregate and process the strategic crops and livestock products, including rice, cassava, maize, groundnut, sesame, tomato, sorghum, soybeans, cocoa, poultry, beef, and dairy products. The Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority acting as advisor to the states to support the procurement of transaction advisors 
and mobilizing private sector investors into the zones. Of course, the private sector, in this regard, the states will require competent and experienced private sector developers, facility managers, and operators to complete necessary infrastructure and logistics within their respective special agro-industrial processing zones. We will also need anchor investors from the private sector in the zones to spearhead production and off-taker arrangements with small-scale farmers, processing and packaging of products, as well as other tenants in the zones provide services related to mechanization, input supply, financing, transport, storage, log and logistics services, amongst others. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we expect that our discussions today will enhance our knowledge and understanding of the implementation and delivery mechanisms for the SAPZs, as well as the investment and procurement opportunities for the private sector, and informed by the design principle of public sector enabled and private sector driven approach. We hope that we will all come out of this session with a clear sense and understanding of the respective roles of each actors and how we can work together to deliver the promise of SAPZs, which were so eloquently articulated by the Vice President, His Excellency Professor Oshin Bajo, and the speakers at yesterday's lunch. I would therefore like to take the opportunity to express our appreciation to our partners, International Fund for Agriculture Development and the Islamic Development Bank for your excellent cooperation in designing and financing this uh, program. Let me also thank the Foreign and Commonwealth Department Development Office, supported UK NAIF, the Bank of Industry, the International Institute for Tropical Ag Agriculture and other collaborators for their partnership in this endeavor. Special thanks to the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning and the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development for your leadership and strong commitment and for championing the SAPZs in Nigeria as well as the partnership of your officials. We particularly thank the National Program Coordinator, who's already been appointed, and his team for their partnership in organizing this event. Let me conclude by quoting President Adesina. I quote, together with our partners, we will work alongside the states and the federal government of Nigeria to help attract finance, support speedy implementation, and ensure that Nigeria unlocks its agriculture potential through the SAPZs. We look forward to a very frank and fruitful exchange so that we can deliver SAPZs with speed and also derive all the benefits we seek from this very transformative program. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. So I would, uh, with your indulgence, uh, request that they display the video, the message of President Adesina uh, last yesterday's uh, ceremony, with your kind permission. Your Excellences, to fully unlock the potential of Nigeria's agriculture, more needs to be done to promote and support 
the agribusiness sector. Transforming agriculture must start with recognizing that agriculture is a business, a wealth creating sector, not just a way of life. Unlocking wealth in agriculture requires the provision of appropriate technologies to boost productivity, development of agricultural value chains, financial structure to support agricultural value chains, and investments in infrastructure to unlock investments by food and agribusinesses. That is why the African Development Bank has launched the development of special agro-industrial processing zones, SAPZs. The SAPZs are new economic zones located in rural areas to be fully supported by infrastructure, power, water, roads, digital infrastructure, and logistics that will allow food and agribusiness companies to locate within such zones. This will put them close to farmers in production catchment areas, provide market offtakes for farmers, support processing and value addition, reduce food losses, and allow the emergence of highly competitive food and agricultural value chains. Your Excellencies, the development of the SAPCs is one that I had envisioned when I was the Minister of Agriculture in Nigeria. That's because I knew that Nigeria needed to diversify its economy by turning agriculture into a wealth-creating sector with highly competitive agricultural value chains. Seven years after my being Minister of Agriculture of Nigeria, the dream to establish these SAPZs continued. I continue to push for the establishment of the SAPZs when I was elected President of the African Development Bank in 2015. Today, the African Development Bank is investing over $1 billion in SAPZs in 18 African countries. Your Excellences, the SAPZs will help to transform the food and agricultural sector. They will attract private agribusinesses to locate in these infrastructure-enabled rural areas. They will create massive amounts of jobs across agricultural value chains. They will also help to reduce rural to urban migration, expand the fiscal space, and enhance the emergence of competitive agricultural value chains. Most importantly, the SAPZs will help to transform rural economies of Nigeria from zones of economic misery to zones of economic prosperity, boosting wealth and livelihoods. Your Excellences, seven years was a long wait, but today I am delighted that the Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zones, SAPZs, have finally become a reality in Nigeria. Congratulations. The African Development Bank is providing $210 million for the development of the SAPZs in Nigeria. We are delighted with our partnership with the Islamic Development Bank, which is co-financing with $150 million and with the International Fund for Agricultural Development, which is co-financing with $160 million. The SAPZ program in Nigeria is the largest in Africa in scale and scope. The commitment of the Minister of Agriculture is strong. The commitment by the Minister of Finance is strong. The commitment by the state governors is very strong. The SAPZs in Nigeria 
are being developed closely with the state governments. And many of them are here today. I was pleased to have hosted several state governors at the African Development Bank headquarters in Abidjan, including executive governors from Ogo State, Kaduna State, Imo State, and Oyo State, and others that joined us later to discuss modalities of implementation. I am delighted that already 19 additional state governments have indicated interests to also establish special agro-industrial processing zones. The African Development Bank will work with all development partners to scale up the SAPZs across Nigeria. Your Excellences, several private sector firms, domestic and foreign, have already expressed keen interest in locating in these zones. The states will require competent and experienced private sector developers, facility managers, and operators to complete necessary infrastructure and logistics within their respective special agro-industrial processing zones. The involvement of the National Sovereign Investment Authority is designed to boost private sector and investor confidence in what will be a multi-billion dollar sector in the years just ahead. The Bank of Industry is committed to financing companies investing in the zones, including small and medium-sized enterprises, commercial farmers, aggregators, input suppliers, primary processors, large processors, and agribusinesses. Together with our partners, we will work alongside the state and the federal government to help attract finance, support speedy implementation, and ensure that Nigeria unlocks its agricultural potential. Your Excellences, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. The launch today of the Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zones, SAPZs, marks the beginning of a long journey of transformation. The SAPZs will help feed Nigeria. The SAPZs will help transform Nigeria's rural economies. The SAPZs will help to expand fiscal space. The SAPZs will fully unlock Nigeria's agricultural potential. The SAPZs will create millions of jobs. Your Excellences, let us travel this journey together. Nigerians deserve the results. Lower food prices, food security, and wealth for rural areas. Thank you very much. Let us put our hands together once again for Africa's optimist in chief, World Food Prize laureate and the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akiomi Adeshina. Quite a lot in there. Essentially, that agriculture, we all know this, is a business. The SAPZs are new economic zones within an enabling environment of Im infrastructure, a partnership of investors, the public and private sector, and the collective journey of a thousand, the collective journey of a thousand years begins with one step. The SAP, of course, is that first step, and together we can help make it happen. And we will. We will. We will. Your presence today is evidence of that commitment and that will to help make it happen. Uh, thank you also to Dr. Lamin Barrow, the DG of the, Afri of the African Development Bank's Nigeria Department, 
which is a very peculiar um, office. Uh, this is the only country within the bank that has a director general. And it is reflective of the size of Nigeria, the complexity of our political uh, system, with executive governors present who will drive a lot of the work that is done in the country, but also, again, representative of the fact that Nigeria has the distinction of being the largest shareholder, most influential shareholder, if I may admit, of the African Development Bank. And for that, I think we can and we should put our hands together. So Dr. Lamien, thank you also very much uh, for your earlier comments. It gives me great pleasure at this point to invite the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, represented here today by Hajia Aisha Omar, the Director of Economic Relations Department, to give opening comments. Hajia, you're welcome to the podium. Please give a warm, a warm round of applause. Good afternoon, Your Excellencies, Executive Governors, Deputy Governors, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Industry, Trade and Investment, the Vice President of the International Fund for Agriculture Development, representatives of development partners, members of the diplomatic call, colleagues from ministries, departments, and agencies with recognition of the national and state coordinators here with us, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning, Mrs. Dr. Zainab Samshuna Ahmed, sends her apologies and high regards. She is unavoidably absent today due to exigencies of duty. I hereby deliver her speech. Today we are gathered again to continue our engagement after a successful launch of the Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zones program yesterday, Monday, 24th, October, 2022. Today is not for speech delivering, but to further strengthen our engagement through technical discussion. The Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning stated yesterday that what is critical in actualizing the program in Nigeria depends mainly on our resilience as stakeholders to ensure the successful implementation of the program. Permit me to therefore reiterate that our collective efforts in this program are fundamental to achieving its development objectives. On this note, I wish our development partners, the high dignitaries from the government side, both federal and state government, the private sector, and all stakeholders successful deliberation as outlined in the event program. Once again, thank you for your participation and interest in collaborating with the federal government of Nigeria to have robust agro-industrial processing zones. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Hajia Aisha Omar, thank you very much for those brief opening remarks on behalf of the Honorable Minister of Finance. Thank you very much. I'd also like to call upon at this point um, a minister representing the core ministries backing the SAPZ in Nigeria. None other than Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud Abubakar, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, a strong and a committed supporter of the SAPZs, without whom we most likely would not be here today. Please give him a warm round of applause as he comes to the podium to give his brief remarks.
Thank you. Your Excellency, the Governor of Ekichi State, and congratulations on your success at the poll recently. The Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, representative of the Minister of Finance, our chairman of committee, House Committee on Institute under the Ministry, the DG of AFDB, the Associate Vice President of IFAD, whom we are very thankful to, for actually, I will have to mention this again, yesterday, in spite of all that they have been doing also, gave a grant of $5 million for the dry season uh, and the flood that is just ravaging most of our farmlands and some areas of the country. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, it is yet another exciting moment of joy to officially welcome Your Excellencies, top government functionaries, development partners, private sector, and other strategic stakeholders to this remarkable event of the Strategic Partners and Investors Forum on the Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zone Program at the African Development Building here in Abuja. I sincerely express my appreciation to the state government, relevant ministries, department agencies, the African Development Bank, International Fund for Agricultural Development, and the Islamic Development Bank, the private sector and strategic partners for gracing this very important occasion. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is relevant to reiterate that SAPZ is a government-enabled but private sector-led program established for inclusive growth and private sector development. This strategic partners and investors forum present unique opportunities to galvanize the momentum of progress recorded so far on the SAPZ. The Federal Minister of Agri Agriculture and Rural Development will provide more support for SAPZ program to facilitate huge flow of investment into modern agro-processing and value chain addition. Our strategic partnership with state government, relevant ministries and MDAs and private sector will, strengthen, will be strengthened through enablement of agro industrialization policy and facilitation of the right mix of incentives for agro-business ecosystem around SAPZ. As we commence the implementation of FAPZ program in eight locations of Kano, Imo, Kaduna, Cross River, Kwara, Oyo, and Ogun State, and the federal capital in the first phase, my ministry through the SAPZ National Coordination Office will also provide a strategic investment prospectus for priority value chains under SAPZ. This investment prospectus will showcase the unique value propositions and SAPZ holds that SAPZ holds for agribusiness investment in Nigeria, which include tax incentives, policy support, among others. The Federal Minister of Agriculture, I mean the Federal Minister, the Federal Government of Nigeria has been able to mobilize more significant amount of investment, commitment from International Development and Institute for the, for the development of the industrial hub, agricultural um, uh, aggregation centers, and the transformation centers as well in the eight locations mentioned earlier. Our doors are still wide open for more investment from the private sector as well as uh, to make the, the, the hub an engine of growth and job creation, wealth creation for women and youth, and to transform the agricultural sector sustainably. SAPZ will significantly drive modernization of agricultural sector, reduce food, uh, food import, drive value addition in staple food crops, and create new economic zones of wealth and jobs creation in rural areas. This laudable event holding today is a game changer in unlocking more private sector investment which represent a strong cycle of fortress for the SAPZ program. The Federal Government of Nigeria 
will not relent in its giant stride towards incentivizing agro-industrialization for private sector development. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I hereby welcome you once again to this strategic partnership and investment uh, and investors forum to seal the real deal in the Nigerian agricultural landscape. Thank you. I'm still very excited about SAPZ. I think we can do better than that. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mohammed Abubakar, again for your strong enthusiasm and support for the SAPZ program in Nigeria. Now, one of the key words in the SAPZ is the word industrial. And it is that distinction that denotes accelerated growth increased production and value addition. The Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment is a critical player in the program's success. And as such, it is our pleasure today to welcome, to provide opening remarks, the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Otumba Ni Adebayo. Please give him a warm Welcome and a round of applause. Thank you very much. Well, for the first time, it gives me great pleasure to say, Your Excellency, the Governor of Ekiti State, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, the representative of the Honorable Minister of Finance, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governors here present, representatives of governors here present, the DG Nigeria Country Office of the Africa Development Bank, the Vice President of the International Fund for Agriculture Development, distinguished guests, sorry, Honorable Members of the National Assembly, my apologies, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be here for the second day of the presidential launch of the Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zone program, focused on engagement with the private sector. The launching of this program has been a long time in the making, and I'm delighted to see it come to fruition. The Nigeria Special Agro-Industrial Agro -Industrial Processing Zones program is a great example of public and private zones Sorry, it's a great example of public and private sector-led organizations coming together to make impactful change and generate increased economic integration and productivity in the agriculture sector. The private sector has gone the extra mile to support the development of the SAPZ project. In Africa, agriculture for too long has not moved with the times. Its development has been slow, and a private sector approach is clearly needed to take things forward. Over the past few years, Impact investing or sustainability-focused investing has become more and more important. This is what makes investing in the SAPZ project so attractive. Agro-industrialization promotes inclusive development by providing sustainable jobs and livelihoods for the vulnerable, that is, youth, women, low-resource, smallholder farmers, and the aged. The bottom line is that as a country, we need to drastically reduce unemployment, expand our manufacturing base, get ready to effectively participate in the African continental free trade area, and ease the pressure on the Naira. Global supply chains are currently threatened, with U.S. shippers under strain from reduced inputs from China and European supply chains negatively affected by the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic still negatively affects many global economies. These global challenges are expected to continue into 2023, but with crisis comes opportunity. In this case, an opportunity for Nigeria to fill a greater amount of global demand. To do this, industrialization and resilience systems are paramount for our success. The launch of the SAPZ program is not just a win for Nigeria's agriculture sector, but for our economy as a whole. 
It helps us tackle some of the country's most pressing challenges. For example, it is currently critical that we reverse the flow of foreign exchange and create a net inflow. The SAPZ project supports the federal government's strategy of driving backward integration. We need to locally produce more of the important commodities that Nigeria is consuming hard in huge quantities, and this project supports that. The development of a critical mass of industrial facilities will improve Nigeria's manufacturing cost competitiveness, another factor that is key to our success. At present, cost is a major impediment to increasing exports and competing with Asian markets. Moving Nigeria forward as a supply chain partner to leading global economies is critical for foreign exchange inflows and employment. Our ministry estimates that if this can be done right, we can deliver up to 6 million jobs in a 10-year period and lift up to 24 million people out of poverty, which in itself is a huge feat. We are not unmindful of the challenges inherent in delivering all these opportunities. So let me speak to these as well as proven mitigating strategies. For one, Nigeria's economy needs to improve its overall competitiveness, the infrastructure and skills gap, and the bureaucratic bottleneck. There's also the mismatch of available capital in terms of quantum, tenor, and structure vis-a-vis -vis our development financing needs. Then there is the need to de-risk projects as well as ensuring the credibility of sponsors. And finally, the challenges around obtaining title and actual access to key inputs such as land. To ensure that the SAPZ and similar projects deliver desired results, we are proposing a public-private sector development model. My time here is limited, but uh, I would like to highlight a few of the model's key features. Firstly, for each of the specific projects in each opportunity area, government will serve as a sponsor and equity holder, but not as a manager. The government provides seed investment and access to key requirements such as foreign exchange, land, legacy assets, assets licenses, permits, etc. But management is completely private sector led. Secondly, DFIs will be asked to provide long term development finance at low rates. Thirdly, private equity and venture capital funds, as well as other financial and strategic investors, will provide co investment and also commercial guarantees. Finally, participation will be structured in the form of permanent capital vehicles, which invest through special purpose vehicles. These are just some highlights, but we are happy to discuss details of this, especially as we have obtained in principle commitments and very enthusiastic buy-in from some of Africa's leading DFIs. The federal government has taken major steps to strengthen investor confidence in the economy. Key legislation, such as the Annual Finance Act and the Revised Companies and Allied Matters Act have been passed. Nigeria also has a number of fiscal investment incentives that help new entrants to the market. These include three to five years of tax holidays for enterprises in what we deem pioneer industries, tax-free operations and capital allowances for agriculture, manufacturing and engineering. The government has also created the Nigerian Industrial Policy and Competitiveness Advisory Council, a vehicle for partnering with the private sector to drive Nigeria's industrialization agenda. Security concerns are also being fully addressed through a combination of increased acquisition of military hardware, strengthened regulation around control of arms and weaponry, regional and global cooperation, and also deployment of soft strategies such as reorientation and rehabilitation. This is a challenging period for not just Nigeria, but for many countries. However, we remain the largest domestic economy and market in Africa and have one of the world's largest suppressed demand for goods and services. As we move into full utilization of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, there is great potential for expansion into neighboring markets. Although times are tough, people are tougher, and our young, intelligent labor force is ready to key into opportunities that will come out of this project. I once again thank all the organizations that have come together to, the, to bring this project to its current stage. Your success is Nigeria's success. 
The federal government is here to provide you all the support you require. May God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Otumba, for your very kind remarks and for the reminders that indeed the SAPZs are a dynamic partnership, a partnership of many co-equals, and the success of this enterprise would depend greatly to the extent on which we're able to partner at a federal state, private sector, and investment level. Thank you very much once again, Honorable Minister, for that reminder. As Dr. Adishina aptly reminded us yesterday, he said that on our own as individuals, we're but drops of water, but together we're a mighty ocean. And I believe very, very strongly that Nigeria's better days are ahead of us, and the SAPZs indeed do mark a new beginning indeed. There's going to be a slight adjustment to the stage uh, for just a few minutes, if the team can come onto the platform and make those adjustments, and then we will pay attention to our next speaker. Thank you very much for your patience. I just crave your indulgence. I want to commend the IAM media team here. This is a first-class, world-class platform here with some really, really great technology. Please give IAM a round of applause here. Yesterday, we had an opportunity to listen to Catherine Megan, the Associate Vice President and General Counsel of IFAD. For more than 25 years, she has been an exceptional international development expert, and at IFAD, she has helped set up the fund's strategy to double the institution's impact for the rural poor while scaling up climate adaptation, private sector lending, with a focus on delivering development solutions. So, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, it gives me great joy in welcoming to the podium once again Catherine Megan, please give her a warm round of applause. The podium and the platform is yours. Good afternoon, Excellencies. The Honorable Minister, Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud Abubakar, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Minister of the Federal Capital Territories, Representative of the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Excellencies, State Governors, Deputy Governors, esteemed colleagues from the Islamic Development Bank, the African Development Bank, Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by congratulating the federal government for the wonderful launch event yesterday. I share the excitement of the Minister of Agriculture and reflecting back on that launch event and seeing that we are now together in this journey to make the SAPZs a reality. IFAD is honored to be part of this game-changing event in close collaboration with the national government, with the Islamic Development Bank, and the African Development Bank. Once again, I'd like to express, before we start, on behalf of all IFAD staff, our compassion and solidarity for the victims of the recent flooding in Nigeria, with large loss of life and loss of livelihood. And this is one of the reasons that we were compelled to provide the $5 million grant to support climate change adaptation, 
to help small farmers through the VCDP project be able to climate proof their projects to in the future be better protected against future floods as well as future droughts. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, during the SAPZ launch yesterday, it was widely agreed that the private sector is a key engine of growth for rural economies. Nigeria is blessed in many ways. Nigeria is blessed with fertile land. 88% of its land is arable. Nigeria is blessed with a young, intelligent population. 75% of the population under age 24. Nigeria is a driver for the continent of Africa. Nigeria has the largest population and the largest GDP of the continent. With all of this together, it is my firm belief that Nigeria is poised as the powerhouse for agro-industrial development with smallholders across the continent of Africa. And smallholder farmers are the key to this transformation. Smallholder farmers are 70% of the farmers in Nigeria, and they produce 90% of Nigeria's food output. IFAD is laser focused on supporting small scale farmers to help them be more productive and to build rural resilient communities in the places where they live and work. And the involvement of the private sector is critical for this. I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the 4P model, that is the public-private producer model, which is one that IFAD has used across the globe with huge success, and one that will be used in the SAPZs. So we've heard today from the honorable ministers of agriculture and industry of the benefits of the public partner, that is, the government. These are around tax incentives, licenses, land access, security concerns, providing seeds and inputs, as well as having the correct enabling policy environment to make the SAPZs a success. That's the public part of the four Ps. Today in our audience, we have a lot of the private part of the four Ps, the private sector, companies and investors. And it's to you in particular that I would like to speak today to encourage you to join together with us, the public, the private, and the producers, who are of course the smallholder farmers and agriculture producers, to make the SAPZ the huge success I'm convinced it will be. I'd like to give you a real-world example of how the 4P model can bring success both for producers, the farmers, but also for the private sector, those of you in the audience today. And to do so, I'd like to give you a real-world example of one private sector company, Olam Nigeria, with whom IFAD and the federal government have worked in conjunction with the VCBP project very successfully. So let's cast our minds back to 2014. In 2014, almost 10 years ago, Olam Nigeria built a beautiful new mill to process rice. But they had a problem. The smallholders were not bringing the rice to the mill to be processed. So the mill went largely underutilized in its capacity. And at the same time, Olam joined the VCBP project, where we worked together using the 4P model to make a complete turnaround. And today, I'm very proud to share with you that Olam has increased the productivity and milling capacity by over 10 times. And the private sector farmers and producers working in this 4P model have more than doubled their income. That shows the success of the 4P model for both the private sector and the producers who are involved with the enabling environment, of course, of the public sector, the government. 
Now, you might ask, the 4P model seems like it's a game changer. How can it really work? And what are some lessons learned and from success of this model? Yesterday evening, the Minister of Agriculture arranged a wonderful uh, high-level roundtable with all the individuals involved in the 4P program with the VCDB project. And I wanted to share with you today four key lessons of success from, um, that we learned from the participants in those projects. And this will really show how the public, private, and producers work together with the producers at the center of the partnership, which is really EFOD's model, to put the small-scale producers and farmers at the center and help them build their income and create vibrant rural communities. So, the first success factor is best practice agricultural techniques. BCDP and EFOD provide specialized agricultural support. That includes ongoing training about best farming practices, and this is often supported by the private sector partner who's working with them, in this case, Olam, about how to produce the best, highest quality rice. This can be using climate-resistant seeds, preparing the land properly, using the right fertilizers, the right timing, farming adaptation to climate change, reducing post-harvest losses, and how to package. At the same time, in addition to providing technical advice, EFOD financed the inputs, the seeds and the fertilizers that the farmers needed, which were repaid after the successful harvest. The success factor number two is having decentralized collection centers, and this is a picture of one of them. Why is it important to have collection centers in the middle of the community? Well, one reason is that EFOD's mission is to build vibrant rural communities so that people can harvest their crops and go to a collection center within their community. It's also good for the environment. It saves transportation costs and fuel. And the, the centers are also places where the product quality can be checked and tested on an ongoing basis. And many of the farmers who bring their crops right to these centers within their communities can have the quality tested, have the sale done, and be paid digitally on their cell phones using their bank accounts by the next day. So it's also very safe for farmers not to have to transport crops longer distances and be subject to potential theft of the crops during transport. In addition to helping set up these centers, EFOD also finances the rehabilitation of warehouses um, as well as the construction of small feeder roads that help farmers go safely to these centers. The third success factor is the Commodity Alliance Forum. And EFOD helped the Ministry of Agriculture create the CAF through the VCDP program and basically what it does is it groups together smallholder farmers because there's much more power in a collective than being alone. And when you have a collective of smallholder farmers together, you have a lot more market power because you are able to sell a huge amount of rice rather than a small amount of rice. And thus, you can, you can provide a lot more um, price for the amount that you're selling. Um, at the same time, I would say that the, with the public sector, so the government as an observer, the farmers and the private sector company, so in this case it's Olam, who you call also the off-taker, they have an agreement ahead of time that Olam, the private sector company, will buy all of the rice that is produced by the farmers in a certain area. And this is good for two reasons. The farmers are comfortable because they know when they harvest their crops, they can sell them. And they don't have to worry about which market will I go to, how will I be able to get there, where will I sell my rice. At the same time, the private sector partner is very comforted because they know they will have a large quantity of high quality rice that they will be able to buy 
and mill in their mill. And so it gives comfort and predictability on both sides. The CAF, I would also just like to give a shout out because it is a springboard for innovation. The Commodity Alliance Forum is doing some really cool stuff and they're bringing the best practices of the private sector into these farmer cooperatives. So they are working with instruments such as flood insurance for crops, transport insurance for farmers so that once they harvest their crops, if they have to transport and there's an accident or theft during transport, they're paid. They are doing very high-tech quality control analyses of the crops during the growing season and once they're harvested. This is, this is an example of one um, calf quality control of the rice crop um, after harvest. And in this way, they help farmers produce the highest quality rice, which of course brings the highest price at market. And the fourth and last success factor um, is that the market price is transparently set by farmer groups. And so there's a pricing committee that sets a market price usually about bi-weekly. And this is um, dominated really by different farmer groups within the CAF who go about and get market information which EFOD also helps to provide market and weather related information transparently so that a fair price can be set both for the purchaser, the private sector off-taker, and for the farmers. And because the farmers really dominate the pricing um, committee, they have trust in the ultimate price and they're comfortable that they can sell that price. And it's a win-win situation for both because it, it cuts out the middleman. There's no middle person who's purchasing from the small farmers and then selling to the big companies. In this way, both the private company and the smallholder farmer win in terms of having a fair and good price for the crop. This is just one example of the 4P model, the public-private producer model, which IFAD has used across the world in the last decade and which I'm really delighted to see being taken up and embraced in the SAPZs here today. In this model, we see farmers often more than double their income while also having a secure and reliable partner to bring new agricultural practices but also to buy their offput. And through this model, the private sector, for those of you in the audience today from the private sector, also gains. With the Olam example, they were able to increase by over 10 times their milling capacity and secure a long-term stable supply of a high quality crop, which they were unable to do beforehand. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the SAPZ journey is a groundbreaking one and it's one I'm honored and excited to be part of, along with IFAD, the Islamic Development Bank, the African Development Bank, the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the state governments, and the private sector. I believe very firmly that the 4P model can help us significantly and powerfully develop agricultural value chains in Nigeria. I encourage all of the private sector companies and investors here today to join us. Together, I'm confident that we will maximize the SAPZ benefits for small-scale farmers and producers and for the private sector in line with national priorities. Together, we can ensure continued food security in Nigeria. Together, we can ensure the income production and resilience of small farmers and producers. And together, we can support Nigeria as the powerhouse that it is for agro-industrialization across the African continent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Catherine Megan, the Vice President of the International Fund for Agriculture, introducing us to a win-win model of force, public, 
private producer partnerships and four success factors and principles that make for successful agricultural practices, i.e. best practice technology, decentralized collection centers, innovative programs, and transparent market prices. Thank you very much. Again, kindly give Dr. Megan a warm round of applause for the work that she and Ifat continue to do in Nigeria. I'm the son, or the grandson rather, of a cocoa farmer. And um, I look at agriculture today, and I can say my grandfather, my late grandfather, would not believe the ecosystem in which we're operating today and the amount of support that is available. To my mind, the SAPZ and all of the efforts of the partners and the federal government and the state governments, all it is leading to is agriculture and agro-industrial processing 2.0. The future ahead of Nigeria is bright indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome to this technical session. Before we proceed, I'm going to kindly ask the honorable ministers, excellencies, the state governors, and deputy governors, as well as representatives of the international partner organizations to come onto the platform for a group photograph. If you would kindly do that right now, it will be much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Governors and Deputy Governors and Representatives of International Partner Organizations. We will now continue with our program. If you could all kindly be seated, it will be appreciated. Thank you. It is my pleasure at this point to invite to the platform to provide 
Brief remarks, Dr. Ramatu Tijani Aliu, the Minister of State at the FCT, who I believe is ably represented by the Chief of Staff, Professor M.T. Usman. Professor M.T. Usman, if you could come to the podium. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Ekiti State, Deputy Governors here present, representatives of our development partners, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming and good afternoon. I had to say that because um, we are in the AFDB building, but we are the hosts. The FCT is hosting you. I bring you very glad tidings from the FCT administration. And I wish to state that for us in the FCT, this project is not only a game changer. In our firm belief, we are in a position to ensure that Nigeria's economy not only gets diversified, but that Mr. President's dream of uh, lifting 100 million citizens out of poverty by the end of May 2029 will be realized through agriculture. Um, our choice in the FCT is the livestock industry. And we are happy that the ISDB has indicated interest and is supporting us in the first phase. With us in this hall today, we have uh, business partners and entrepreneurs of various skills that are already working with us to bring this to, uh, to fruition. We also do believe that every state in Nigeria should participate in this project and are happy that 19 other state governments are already prepared to join us. I'm convinced that together we will not only make agriculture the centerpiece of our economy, we shall in due course make Nigeria and Nigerian agriculture the driver of African development. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor M.T. Usman, sharing brief remarks on behalf of the Honorable Minister of State, Dr. Ramatu Tijani Aliu. Thank you very much. I'd like to now invite our next speaker to the, to the platform, uh, His Excellency Professor Placid Njoku, the Deputy Governor of Imo State, to give his remarks. Ministers, my colleague Deputy Governors, Your Excellency the Governor of Ekiti State, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, since yesterday I have participated in this exercise where we're launching the SAPZ program. And for me, basically as an animal scientist and agriculturist, I believe that this is probably one of the most profound programs that the federal government has had to host in its effort to diversify the economy of Nigeria. For a long time, we've talked about agriculture being the driver of industrialization. What do we mean by that? Basically because if we improve agriculture, we improve productivity of our seeds, we improve total production per unit area. And also we're able to um, reduce food losses. And therefore there's a lot more food that's available. And when it's impossible for you to consume everything together, what do you do? You process it. And from processing and with increased production and so on, you go into small industrial uh, exercises until you have a maximal um, bigger industrial settings. And so, if we get the SAPZ right, we can truly, 
truly activate industrialization in Nigeria. And if we do that, there, there are many options that we can get. A um, lot of very good jobs will emanate. We will be able to feed our people better. And of course, trade will improve. And of course, the ranking of Nigeria in the eyes of many people across the world will also improve. So I, th I think that the SAPZ is a great project. And I'm delighted that Imo State is included in the first phase of this project, and His Excellency the Governor, Distinguished Senator Hope Uzodema, who unavoidably is absent, and who insisted that I must come to this program, certainly saw the value of what was imminent from this project. And so we are very glad to participate, and we give our commitment, full commitment, to the full implementation and efficient implementation of this project. We have quite a lot of things going for us in Imo State. And Imo State is probably one of the few states that has an international cargo airport. And consequently, anything we produce, anything we products we produce, commodities we produce, can actually be ferried to other parts of the country and in, in fact also to international destinations. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to say that Imo State is very happy to be on APZ, and I'm very delighted and congratulate all the other states that also are, and we sincerely hope that this project can be expanded soon so that many other Nigerian states can also come to participate. Thank you very much indeed. Now that's the kind of enthusiasm that we need. Please give Professor Njoku again a warm round of applause. That's the kind of support and enthusiastic engagement that we need from all of our governors in the Federation. Up next is His Excellency Mr. Nasiru Yusuf Gauna, the Deputy Governor of Kano State, to give his brief remarks. Okay, again, I guess I should have scanned the audience very well. Let's just say I don't have 2020 vision, <laughs> which now moves me on to our next speaker uh, to provide brief remarks. His Excellency, Mr. Kayadi Alabi, the Deputy Governor of Kwara State. I did get that right this time around. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, the Honorable Minister, uh, first of all, I bring us the fraternal greeting of His Excellency, Malam Abdurrahman Abdurazak, the Executive Governor of Kwara State, who is here ably represented by the Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture and Rural Development, Kwara State. Uh, for us in Kwara State, today's event, we started yesterday, is a dream come true. And we must congratulate the federal government and all the partners for making sure that this dream is becoming a reality. In the last three years, when the government of Alaja Brahman Abraza came to Kuala State, the vision was very clear. The people were hungry, and there was an urgent need to actually bring people from the shackles of poverty. And what we needed to do was to take the full advantage that are inherent in agriculture. We cannot do that without going into production and industrialization. So for us in Kuala State, we are ready, and we have a very comparative advantage in the area of livestock, and that is one area that Kuala State government has invested and will continue to invest, and we want to say we are ready, and we are ready, and we are ready to lead, to support in whatever way we can to make sure that this program is a reality. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Your Excellency. Mr. Kayode Alabi, for those remarks. Again, very much appreciated. And thank you for being in Abuja to enthusiastically support the SAPZs. It gives me great pleasure at this point to invite our next speaker, who is none other than His Excellency Chief Adebayo Lawal, the Executive Deputy Governor of Oyo State. Your Excellency, um, <clears throat> let me first of all uh, congratulate all of us in Nigeria for this project, which uh, ought to have come a long time ago because um, um, Nigeria is passing through a dire situation in terms of um, um, extreme poverty arising from a lack of attention for agriculture. For us uh, in New York State, and indeed in the southwestern part of this country, we have decided to embark on four major cardinal programs, of which um, agriculture is one. And for that reason, we have uh, really, ahead of this project, established um, farm settlements backed up by international donors. And so this pro uh, um, SAPZ coming at this moment uh, is just um, to really complement what we are doing in your State. At a particular location, we have really isolated um, a large tract of land, which in fact, um, as a result of a conscious and intentional efforts um, to expand the space of agriculture, we have trained young people at Nasarawa. As a matter of fact, about 3,300 uh, young people have been create, uh, uh, trained, and they are currently located at Fashola Farm Settlement. For this reason, small um, household uh, farm settlements have been created. And indeed, in New York State, there are about five zones um, and we are re replicating uh, settlements, agree settlements, in order to suck population from the uh, city centers into farm settlements. Now, why is this uh, um, kind of project uh, important? For us in Nigeria, it is obvious now that uh, Nigeria is a mono economy, but that economy is really not driving Nigeria in the right direction. So we must look back, we must go back to the land. And ICPC uh, is one uh, driver of states in Nigeria to go back to. I haven't listened to uh, the president of um, Africa Development Bank, Naomi uh, Adesino. We have to be consciously come together and, and embrace agriculture in order to reduce poverty that is ravaging us in Nigeria. And um, for us, I think. And I know of a fact that um, agri being one of the major um, areas of attention, we have opened up uh, roads, as we speak, in Oyo State. We have opened up about 1,500 um, kilometers of um, road in rural areas, so that uh, farm produce that are coming from such locations can be brought to city centers. So I have to congratulate um, the drivers of the SAPC for this noble objective. And I believe that your state will key into the program and take advantage of expert and expertise that will come along with the um, SAPC. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Chief Adebayo Lawal, the Executive Deputy Governor of your state and a former Attorney General in the state. Please give him a warm round of applause. Again, thank you for emphasizing the need for connected infrastructure of roads to facilitate production. Essential, important, critical to the success of the SAPZs in the country. I'd like to call him at this point on the special advisor to the Governor, to the Governor on International Cooperation and Investment of Cross River State, His Excellency Ben Ayade, Governor of Cross River State, if you could come to the podium and provide a few remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Governor of Ekiti State, Your Excellencies, Deputy Governors here, ladies and gentlemen, my principal, the Governor of Cross River State, His Excellency, Professor Senator Ben Ayade, is unavoidably absent today and have asked me to bring his goodwill to this program. The Cross River State Government, in the index, uh, prepared, uh, preparedness uh, index, have gone very far. The government, through His Excellency, had established the Ogoja rice meal because through the SAPC program, Cross River State had been apportioned the rice, cocoa, and cassava crops. And so far, the governor had we have put up the modern, ultra-modern rice mill in Ogoja and also the cocoa processing plant in Ecom in preparation for the start-off of the SAPZ. There is an evacuation corridor, like I heard uh, His Excellency mention in his speech. We have ongoing, about 80% ready, the Obudu International Cargo Airport to uh, also evacuate produce from SAPZ designated hubs in Cross River State. And we've already signed some partnerships with some agro developers, which we, are, we have some of them in the room at this meeting. So going further, we expect that uh, we look forward to uh, disbursements, and the proper kickoff of the program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My namesake, Mr. Victor Edet, representing His Excellency Ben Ayade, the Governor of Cross River State. Can you give him a warm round of applause again? Very shortly, we'll be going into the technical sessions. And we have some fantastic sessions uh, that are extremely informative coming up. You don't want to miss that. Having said that, and preparing you for what's coming up next, I would be remiss if I did not allow one of our dignitaries today to come to the podium and share a few words with us. Just Barely a week ago, he took office as the governor of Ekiti State. His state is not a, a part of the first phase of the SAPZ, but is certainly a frontliner for phase two. Dis distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to the latest governor um, in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, Mr. Biodu Oyebanji, the Governor of Ekiti State, the podium is yours. Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Deputy Governor, Members, House of Representatives, and Chair House Committee on Agri-Schools and Research Institutions. 
DG Nigerian Office of the AFDB and his team. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Well, I'm, I'm glad and I'm excited to be here. Though Ekiti State didn't make the first batch, but the truth of, is that for the past three years, we have developed an agri processing zone in Ekiti State. Presently, we have 15 investors struggling in that zone, just trying to combat every, uh, a lot of challenges that has to do with production. So I'm excited to be here today, and I'm happy that help is on the way. I sat there, I was just turning in my mind what will happen if you're able to drive this process through in the next three years. We are sure of a country whereby there'll be prosperity, whereby there'll be employment, whereby there'll be food, and there'll be a lot of value additions across the agri value chains. So I congratulate Nigerians, I congratulate the states that have benefited to be part of the first phase, and I look forward to boarding the SAPC train as soon as possible from Ekiti State. Once again, I thank you for this platform to exp at least to, to speak to you, and uh, we continue to collaborate with all other institutions that are ready to help us lift our body. Thank you. God bless you. His Excellency, Mr. Biaduno Yebanji, the Executive Governor of Ekiti State, Again, thank you for latching on to this program so early in your administration. Uh, very appropriate for a state that is richly endowed as Ekiti State is. We wish you good success in your new assignment. Moving the train along and having heard from several of our excellencies and ministers, we're now going to go into the more technical part of how the SAPZ is to be operationalized. That's the core. At the end of the day, this is a program with a difference. This is a game changer, the likes of which we haven't collectively come together to help support. So to kick the ball rolling, the proverbial ball, I'm going to invite to the platform for a presentation. It looks like I'm jumping ahead of myself. I see Dr. Barrow coming up to the platform. Um, actually, I don't see him in the room right now. No, he disappeared. Well, ladies and gentlemen, much earlier I did see Mr. Jimmy Lawal in the room. Sorry? Okay. I did see Mr. Jimmy Lawal earlier in the room, and um, I wanted to acknowledge his presence, representing, again, the governor of Kaduna State. But I gather that in his stead is the commissioner of agriculture who is here. Again, we welcome you, sir. And if you'd like to make a few brief remarks, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, Your Excellency, the Governor of Ekiti State, Your Excellency's Deputy Governors here present, representatives of ministers here present, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Ibrahim Husseini. I'm the Commissioner of Agriculture, Kaduna State. And I would like to also give a few comments and remarks uh, on SAPZ Kaduna State. First, I um, used to say that um, Kaduna State has a um, large population, the third in Nigeria, about um, 9 million people. We have 46,053 square kilometers of land, and out of which 
2.2 million hectares of land is cultivable. And we have about 800,000 hectares of land that is available for irrigation. Um, so we have comparative advantages in the production of maize. We are number one in Nigeria. We are also number one in the production of ginger in Nigeria. We are third in the production of potatoes in Nigeria. And we are third in the soybeans production in Nigeria. We produce a lot of rice, sugarcane, and so forth. Now, the, His Excellency, the Governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasr Erupai, has established a number of policies that have made it easy for investors to come to Kaduna State. Um, we have attracted several millions of US dollars in the last seven years of His Excellency's administration in Kaduna State. Olam, uh, which example has been demonstrated here, is one of the investments, the largest hatchery in Africa. Tomato Joss is exporting tomato uh, from Kaduna State. ALA is a joint venture with the Danish government that has established a ranch which has improved the production of milk from the local cattle of one, um, one uh, liter per cow per day to 25 liters per cow per day, and the, the target is about 40 liters per cow per day. Um, last week, His Excellency established or launched the OCP, which is a fertilizer company uh, that is also um, assisting farmers in the state, Barbados Fertilizer, uh, Matrix Fertilizer, Mahindra Tractor Manufacturing Plant, Dangote Tomatoes, all have established in Kaduna State in various areas. Um, we have established three aggregation centers in the three senatorial zones to assist the SAPZ project. And um, uh, Kaduna State actually is very much ready and is happy to be part of the participating states in the SAPZ uh, project. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much to the Honorable Commission of Agriculture, Kaduna State, representing His Excellency, the Governor of Kaduna State. Thank you very much, sir, for those remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming now to the technical session, and we have two superb presentations that will be made in the time that we do have. Very short presentations, but powerful and very illustrative. Uh, both presenters um, are not coming to the table today, as it were, with theoretical projections of what SAPZs are all about, but real-life applications that have very, very profound value. To get us going, um, I'd like to call on the Senior Special Advisor to the President of the African Development Bank Group, a good friend, Professor Oyebanji Oyelaran, who is the Senior Advisor on Industrialization. Uh, I don't want to preempt him, but all I can tell you is this. His presentation is loaded. The platform is yours. Thank you very much, 
<laughs> I see my <laughs> brother Bonir is uh, smiling. I don't want to do the uh, protocol, so I won't miss out anybody. I just want to stand on the existing protocol. I want to thank everybody for being here today. My job is to more or less summarize uh, with some basic information and data on exactly what SAPZ is, what the structure is, but more importantly, how we are proceeding with uh, the implementation of SAPZ. Uh, first, you have heard from everyone uh, that this is a, a structure that is designed to concentrate agro-processing activities within areas of high agricultural potential. And this is the principle by which every state was asked to pick two things, their location and the top three or four commodities. And within this space that the states agree to work in, uh, we are going to concentrate agricultural producers, aggregators, distributors uh, into one location in order to, do, uh, to increase productivity and to raise competitiveness of agriculture. What are the goals of SAPZs and what are the outcomes? The first is to enhance productivity. As you know, one of the most difficult things that Africa has confronted over the last 40 years is that productivity is extremely very low. The mechanization, the use of fertilizer, uh, seeds, and so forth, uh, whereby others in the last 30 years have totally uh, outpaced Africa, and including our own country, Nigeria. Uh, for most commodities, we have remained simply on the same yield per hectare level. But thank God there's been a lot of uh, uh, improvement over the last couple of years, uh, and we are beginning to take this serious. The second major uh, goal is to reduce post-harvest losses, and I will show when I get there very uh, soon. Then the third thing is to reduce what you call transaction cost, because when you have actors located within the same geographic area, uh, proximity and uh, collaboration uh, becomes easier. You are able to leverage each other's skills, leverage each other's knowledge, you are able to form uh, communities of production uh, much more easily. And the, third goal, the last goal is to increase value addition. And this is what we've been hearing since morning. One of the reasons, in fact, when you look at, people talk a lot about, you know, Nigeria's uh, agricultural GDP, uh, contribution to GDP. On average, for the last 40 years, has remained almost 20%. And when you speak to people, they tell you, oh, Nigeria agriculture is extremely very important. Now, that figure of 23-odd average is actually a symbol of regression, a symbol of stagnation. I'll give you two examples. When you look at two comparator countries, Malaysia and Vietnam, in the 80s, Malaysia had, on average, 20%. GDP, uh, agri, agri contribution to GDP. Today, 7.4 or something. Same with Vietnam. In fact, Vietnam's change is so rapid, it's mind boggling. In the 80s, about the same time we started, Vietnam agricultural contribution to GDP was about 40%. Today, it's about 12.5%. What does that mean? Countries that are making progress must move away from having dominancy of their producers within small-scale uh, on-farm uh, produce, production into modern agriculture. This is basically what SAPZ is said to do. And what you find when you see that figure and you compare with manufacturing contribution to GDP, our manufacturing contribution to GDP has also remained under 10% over the last 40 years. It's not just a, a sign of stagnation, it's actually a regression. If you are in the same class, you don't pass, you don't fail, you don't go anywhere, everybody has passed you by. So I don't see it as just stagnation, it's also a reversal. For the most of our comparators, 
contribution, manufacturing contribution has raised up to like 25-30%. In, uh, in South Korea, for example, today, agri contribution to GDP is about 2.5%. And they feed themselves. Export from Korea in uh, 2019, before COVID, I always use 2019 because of COVID distortion, was about $80 billion from agricultural processing alone. From agricultural processing. In 2019, Vietnam export for four or five commodity areas, black pepper, cashew nut, uh, cocoa bean, $40 billion. The total oil export from Nigeria was $34 billion. So, this is what SAPC is said to do. We need to move away from this narrative uh, into modern agriculture. So the outcomes we expect, reduce food import, assure food security, boost revenue from agriculture, create wealth on rural farming. In other words, we want to ensure that we uh, attain rural industrialization, create new sustainable jobs, and enhance hope. The functions, and many, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on this, of SAPZ, the kinds of financing that we are providing, will go towards those very difficult areas for farmers. Land preparation, and of course, in terms of inputs, farm credit, improved seed fertilizers, irrigation, mechanization, extension services. And the key actors are going to be across all the broad areas. Smallholders, medium commercial farmers, more than 50 hectares, large commercial farmers, more than 250 hectares. So we are not romantizing the idea that you only have smallholders. Africa should not sit there and say we are just, we are all smallholders and we are very romantic about it. We need to have a transition. Every country that has made progress has attained what you call structural transformation. We are at a phase where others were 30, 40 years ago. And we need to move from there. That's one of the things that Africa needs to do. Nigeria, in particular, has to lead the way. So we are going to push for agricultural transformation. And we're going to have these agricultural transformation centers. Those that are now described as smallholders doing you know, re repetitive jobs, uh, toiling every day with very little output, we want to transform their lives. And therefore, the SAPC is going to provide you with logistics. Uh, it's going to provide you with processing. Apart from the agri transformation centers within those communities, you are going to have the key hubs where the factory system will be built. And uh, you have heard that now. This is the kind of thing that you are likely to see. And we are thankful that a lot of states have already actually going ahead. Uh, my brother from who be, we, he bears, we bear the same name, although I'm not a governor. <laughs> uh, he was so uh, enthusiastic about this program that I said, look, I need to come and see what others are doing. And I was really very thrilled about that. So if you look at the structure, you have several dimensions. You have the social services, uh, because we are going to basically create new secondary cities and towns. You have social services, you have the production area where you have modern farm clusters, greenhouse, livestock, fish farm, utilities, ground maintenance. And then, of course, you're going to have hospitality, health centers, schools, playground, coal stores, and all of that. Uh, in the center of it is where you have the main hub. That's where the factories are. And that factory is where the processing value addition takes place. Agro-processing zones. R&D laboratory training, mechanization, packaging, and so forth. All around this uh, particular zone, say, for example, you have a 500 hectares or 1,000 hectares uh, SAPZ. Within 20, 30, 40, 70 kilometers around it, you have all the adjoining villages that will benefit from what the hub is doing. So we are going to be part of the funding is to open up those roads, create logistics, for them, have warehouses, dryers, and all kinds of things. That's what you call the ATCs. Uh, you see them across all the four corners, called the agricultural transformation centers. In, in specific terms, 
we started with several states, but eight of them, that is uh, seven states and FCTA, uh, was able to quickly cross the readiness index that we started with. And as, as you can see on the board, we democratized the choice of uh, what to do, which location, which commodity. It is the states that decided, the commissioners of agri, commissioners of finance and industry that decided which value chain that they want to focus on. That does not exclude other commodities in any state. So but this is, uh, I don't need to put too much emphasis on this, but this is really what happened. But as you have been assured by the minister and others, we already have 18 other states lining up. Uh, and we are going to be rapidly working with them. Uh, our country DG is here. If any state wants to write expression of interest, please contact him, and then we add them to the list of states that will be going. So how do we implement? As we said, it is government-enabled, private sector-driven. Uh, the, the key actors within this complex private sector arrangement are transaction advisors, to ensure transparent selection of world-class contractors. Why do we insist on world-class contractors? The financing that we are providing is only catalytic. If AFDB give you 80 million, 50 million, 70 million, it's only catalytic. You might need up to $200 million to finish the zone. So our model is that why we, as government, you catalyze the building, the modeling, the, all of the things we've done over three years, we've been on this since April of 2019, uh, each state needs to attract key investors who will also bring their own money to the zones as equity partners, as contractors. We say DBO, for example, design, build, and operate. That will be for us the ideal thing, you know, that someone will come, work with the state. We don't want states carrying more debts because we're already having so much debt. You know, so we want states to be uh, partnering with all these knowledge uh, centers. Then competent and experienced private developers, as I said, to construct, to manage their CPCs. Anchor investors. This is really the measure of success of any zone. The ability to attract zone tenants, those big ones, those middle, medium ones, those big, uh, small ones. This is really the measure of the success. If you build a Hilton or a Transcorp, and the place is empty, you have failed. You know, what you want to see is 95% uh, uh, room occupancy. That is the same thing with a zone. Then storage warehouse providers to provide link between the buyers and the producers. So we are inviting all these groups of people. Uh, even if you are not in this business already and you want to be part of this and you have experience in logistics, we are inviting you into those zones. You may just want to, you know, build warehouses, build schools, build hospitals within the zones. And of course, banks to provide a bank bankable agribusiness uh, uh, loan. And I, I would like to acknowledge Bank of Industry. They have committed a billion dollars to lend to all of those who will locate within, uh, within our zones. In fact, they did this since 2018. They made this commitment since 2018. And each time the MD is telling me, Prof, what are you waiting for? We have money. You know, but of course, we need to build the zones uh, first. And of course, commercial farmers also. Uh, so the implementation principles, to repeat, is that it is government as enabler. What the government has done at the federal level is to help you know, the states to, 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 to uh, structure their loans. But at the end of the day, these zones belong to the states. They must take responsibility. So within the states, we have set up the PIUs project implementation units. At the federal level, we have also set up the national coordination. Uh, Kabil, can you stand up? Kabil is the, the director for the, and he's going to be managing this. In fact, go, the general procurement uh, 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 protocols will be sent out from his office uh, very soon to all, especially for the private people who want to get involved. So. We want to ensure transparent procurement of private, of private operators, accelerate delivery, attraction of top-class commercial farmers and industrial processors, inclusiveness of smallholders, smallholders that we hope to transform in the next 10 years. We don't want to remain, we don't want them to remain smallholders. We don't want to remain a country of rural 80%, 90%. We don't want to do that. 
We want to make sure we transform our country. That is the goal of SAPZ. And of course, the promotion of green infrastructure. Government also has been providing for us sound legal and regulatory framework to attract investment. And of course, more important, high level leadership. At the end of the day, anywhere you have strong leadership at the top, projects succeed. Wherever you have a knowledgeable, committed leadership at every level, projects succeed. So we are counting on all the governors, all of our leaders, to commit to this and make the change that we desire. Two or three more slides. So the enablers, government, you said government is enabler. What are these enabling things that we need to do? SAPC will provide facilities, services that are not available for the most part outside of the zones. Provide a productive visual environment by responding to the nationwide binding constraints in, such as regulatory regimes, tax, as you had the Minister of um, Industry read out, uh, power, water, rail, telecoms, roads, and to raise the level of investment uh, and, and, of course, uh, 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 infrastructure within those zones. And we also have a lot of private people working with us all this journey. We have Nine Mobile. We have uh, IBM. I never knew IBM was in agriculture. The day they showed their stuff, I was outstanding. So we have several of them who will be happy to join us uh, in doing this. Uh, the second and last enabler is that, and the uniqueness of the SAPZ, is that it is deliberately located within what we call peri-urban areas. Uh, usually the easiest way to build a, an economic zone or an export zone is to go to where there is already infrastructure, near a port, near a seaport, and then you import the intermediate input and just ship out uh, the goods to, to wherever, you know. But this is a deliberate decision to situate the SAPZs in between rural and urban area. We call them secondary cities. And secondary cities are the backbone of most world, uh, the largest cities of the world. If you take Kaduna, you take Enugu, you take Ibadan, all of those towns around them are there where the people are producing the food, all the produce. But oftentimes they are left to their own devices. They are left to no infrastructure. People live very difficult lives. So the idea is to locate the zones within those communities. And then you use policy to actually induce structural transformation. That is the aim why we are not putting these zones in Ibadan, Enugu Center, or somewhere else. Uh, they are usually not fully integrated into national plans. This plan, this framework, will help to revitalize those economies and ensure balanced uh, development. And finally, I want us to regard the SAPZ as an industrial policy tool. It's an industrial policy tool. There is no country in the world and I've been teaching this for 40 years, there's no country in the world that has become a modern economy without industrialization. Maybe three or four of them. Brunei, uh, a few, two or three uh, uh, countries in the Gulf where you produce a disproportionately large amount of oil but you have a small population. Those are the only people, so you just buy everything. But go and check in economic history, there is no country starting from Britain to continental Europe to America, you have to industrialize. And most of the time, you have to start from agriculture. Surplus labor from the rural areas move to the cities. Here, what we have had is that surplus, <laughs> over surplus unskilled labor move to the city and form slums. And then the cities are clogged up, the cities that have no infrastructure of its own. So what we want to do is stem this flow. Use SAPZ to actually reverse the flow. You will have now urban to rural, but people living in a more quality life. Move away from Ibadan, move away from Lagos, and go to the secondary cities where you produce and where you live uh, a good life. Finally, the program components, as I've, I, I told you, Kabiru, and the colleagues at the state are going to be managing all of this. So you have the institutional, develop, uh, institutional development and policy, uh, infrastructure, program coordination, financing, in those three layers. Uh, we form the MPC, 
the national uh, uh, office uh, headed by uh, Kabir, uh, and also at the state level, each of them now have a PIU already in place. I don't know whether all of them have submitted. But also, more importantly, now, as we are calling out, we want anchor investors. We want other kinds of investors, even if you are not going to be. Anchor investor means the dominant investor in a place that will pull the orders. So the Gabon example has been a fantastic example for us. It's in, uh, in, it's, it's, uh, the bank is involved in some way. Uh, in, in the last uh, 12 years, what happened with the Gabon zone uh, is that export from that zone was around $350 million. In 10 years or so, they moved to over a billion dollars. This zone was built and to produce uh, uh, forestry products. Jobs created almost four times. Uh, GDP contribution moved from 200 and as at uh, this year, is almost a billion dollars. And that country industry, that particular industry moved from the ranking of 42 to fifth in Africa and globally it's moved from 10 to second. So this is what the SAPC does. When you congregate all of these producers in one place, you find uh, higher productivity levels and greater uh, outputs. The example of Vietnam is one of my favorite examples. As we speak today, a lot of countries have experienced huge uh, growth decline. Uh, the economy of uh, Vietnam today is growing at 17.5%. 17.5%. We are growing at 3%. In fact, world average is hovering around 3 to 4%. Why? Every, almost all their uh, growth is based on this kind of agro processing. They had, in 2019, 376 industrial zones. Why am I showing you this? So that we can be ambitious. We are talking of one zone per, per state now. I would like to see four or five zones for every state in the next 10 years. And many of them could be private. If private people can build their own zones. And you find that by 2018, the zones attracted over 7,500 domestic projects, worth over $41 billion. 8,000 foreign projects with capital investment of $145 billion. In the, this country was earning $3 billion each then. It has moved up. Cashew nut, rice, cassava, fish, coffee, tea, black pepper, rubber, resulting in average export every year of $40 billion. I am showing this to inspire us that we can do the same. And their key, the key to their growth has been foreign investment. We should not be hostile to people coming to invest in our country. We don't, have, we don't have the money. You know, Nigeria is a big country, but we don't have the money. You need people, create an ecosystem for people to come and invest. But even our own people, let them invest. Let's, let's make the environment easy for them. I see so many of them here. Always they are struggling with power, with water, with this. Let's make it easy for them so that they can invest in our country. Finally, these are the people we are inviting. Zone builders, facility managers, leading investors, farming factory people, service providers for schools, health centers, in all of these towns. Please, please send the message across. Anchor and large subcontracting in investors also. Uh, financial services, ITs and communications. One-stop center that we're going to build within those zones. So let's spread the message. Let's ensure that you know, these zones are a success. We believe very strongly that we are going to succeed. And uh, Kabir, are you still here? I wanted him to say one or two words. Uh, but like I said to you, the general procurement notice is going to be sent this November uh, in one form or the other so that everybody will know exactly what role that we should be playing. Thank you very much. Um, once again, welcome. Professor Oyebanji Oyenka Oyelaron, one of Africa's 
most distinguished urban urbanization and industrial experts and the senior advisor on industrialization to the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akimumi Adishna. Breaking it down for us very simply, uh, Prof, I trust that the PowerPoint presentation here will be made available to participants if they do ask. Where will they, they be able to get that? On the website, I presume. Um, so please, before you leave, uh, obtain the information from Prof on where the PowerPoint presentation can be obtained. Excellent breakdown of the SAPZ ecosystem, its function, its structure, implementation models, and the partnership, public-private producer partnership, which Dr. Megan referenced earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, you are all zone builders. Collectively, we can make this happen. In any enterprise anywhere in the world, there are always three components. Any enterprise that you can think of. The first is excellence, and it's non-negotiable. The second is time. And as we all know, time is usually in short supply. So time is against us. The future was yesterday, and there's a lot of catch-up to do. And the third is the financial resources and the human resources to make it happen. I like what Prof alluded to a few moments earlier. For the SAPZ, or any enterprise to be successful in Nigeria, we have to create an enabling environment to make this happen. That means business-friendly policies, as well as greater attention to security to safeguard the investments of Nigerians and foreign investors. So once again, kindly give Professor Oyebanji Oyeinka Oyelaran a warm round of applause for that fantastic presentation. Again, that is his very, very quick, short-form uh, presentation. Uh, he's loaded with a whole lot more information, so please latch on to him. You will be glad that you did. Now, Prof has given us a, the broad strokes on the SAPZs, but to actually now break it down a little bit further and show you in real terms how an SABZ operates and the impact that it has and the revenues that can be generated from running an SABZ properly, I'm going to invite to the platform to share their own experiences with us, Suren Abe Wikrema, who is the Vice President, Arise Integrated Industrial Platforms. Prof mentioned some of what they're doing in Gabon. I don't know what example that he's going to use, but whatever it is, again, it will be powerful, inspiring, and encouraging. Suren, welcome to the platform. Honorable Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Director General of African Development Bank, Honorable Minister Representatives, High-Level Government Representatives, Your Excellencies, Governors, Deputy Governor, and uh, also our Ugun State Commissioner of Agriculture, Dr. Adelina. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to thank ADB, IFAD, ISDB for organizing the launch of the IZAPZ and inviting Arise to say a few words about our operations in making Africa thrive. Nigeria is not an uncommon location for us. Our birth was in Nigeria, Olam. This is where we started first. And we developed into a rise. Let me take you through the presentation. Firstly, 
I would explain as to how we have industrialized the local processing in Africa. We started in Gabon and we moved into Benin, Togo and the west part of Africa and now we are aggressively moving into west and central part and English speaking nations such as Nigeria, Ghana, Rwanda etc. So our zones are multidisciplinary in, in, in a sense. From Gabon we started in wood processing and furniture manufacturing and in different countries we look at the available raw material, the needs of the government, the needs of the community. This is uh, approved and this is most importantly the completion of the subsidiary loan agreements between the Federal Ministry of Finance and each participating state, the establishment of the oversight structures and implementation structures. You know, when you look at it, it looks very complicated. I saw Prof's uh, slide, which shows all the implementation actors involved, where you have the federal oversight structures, the state oversight structures, coordination structures, but these are, these are really not difficult. If, if, if Vietnam and other places are making so many of these, and China and all this, because they have these kinds of structures that can facilitate the processes that are taking place at the federal and state level. Of course, there are other things as uh, simple as opening bank accounts. I'm, I'm glad that many of the states have actually established their teams, and these are all important. So we urge you to accelerate the actions and send the documentation through the Ministry of Finance. But I didn't want to seize this, miss this opportunity to remind the states and the federal structures, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Agriculture, to complete this process. Thank you, colleagues, also in the three institutions, I mean, in the, in the bank, especially from the Nigeria Country Department for your dedication, for your spirit of teamwork. Uh, I see Atsuko at the back, who has been like a quarterback in a, in the true sense, I really want to thank single her out for her passion. You know, she keeps us going, and she has been there constantly, ever ready to. There are too many to mention, but uh, you all know yourselves. But we, we we thank each and every one of you for the great work and for your collaboration. Finally, uh, I wish to thank the event planners. You know, I am. I think you will all agree with me that they have done a first-class job in uh, availing the facilities and bending over backwards and do, you know, making life comfortable that we will be able to have such a successful launch yesterday and today in the interactive section. So please, let's join hands and give them a rousing clap so that you know, I think it's a testimony of uh, our capabilities, not only to organize these events, but to deliver big things like SAPZs. And thanks also to the governors and the deputy governors for their presence, their time, and their leadership commitment. We look forward to sustaining this momentum and really delivering the promise of SAPZs, which we all believe it's a game changer. So let's do it. And thank you very much. We will have light refreshments and uh, network a bit before we leave so we can stretch our legs and do a little exercise and get to know each other very well. But we thank you very much for your time and for your partnership. So let's keep it going. Thank you. <laughs>